Okay, good morning. Welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name's Walter Neal. I'm a UK reseller. I buy and sell anything I like and try and flip it for a profit. Today, we're going to have a bit of a vlog, a little bit of a chat, catch up. Um, just let you know what's going to happen through the rest of this week. For those of you who follow my channel, as you know, I've been sick. Um, I had a sinus infection and was on antibiotics and loads of painkillers. So I didn't actually get to a car boot sale at all this last uh, weekend. But I still have stock sitting here from the previous week. So I can still make a few videos this week. I want to thank absolutely everybody who sent me messages and uh, wished me well. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. So today I got a few things to show you. I've done a little bit of filming um, from last week's that I got to put in. I'm going to show you that pinball machine. I was playing with that. Um, which, and I got a few bits to show you. So we'll just get started. I'm going to show you the pinball machine. Now, I've done a, a haul video last week and I showed you a 1979 Tommy Atomic Pinball that I purchased. Absolutely lovely thing. Well, I filmed myself playing it so you could see it working and it is fab. I tell you, that is as much fun as it looks. I don't know uh, how many of you remember playing on them, but I absolutely loved it. I spent all morning playing on it. Um, I had to check the, the stock was working before I sold it. Um, yeah, but that was great. I paid a tenner for that. It mint in its box. Um, I figured out why the light weren't flashing. One of the batteries I used was dead. Um, so I put new batteries in there and I was playing. As you can see, it was working beautiful so i had great fun with the pinball machine that's now up on the website up for sale um i purchased a load of porcelain figurines last week when i purchased all the bisque porcelain dolls now i filmed both of them at the time but i only put the dolls in the video so i'm going to show you now a little collection of porcelain figurines that i filmed last week that was supposed to go in with the dolls but never did so have a look at these heck of a buy okay this is another group <laughs> sort of buy them but don't uh, we got a mixture of wedgwood colport and capa de monte figurines now there's quite a lot here the entire group owe me 45 pounds or about 70 dollars for the entire collection here we have a capa de monte fortune teller we got some Welsh porcelain as well. Um, is this one Captain Monte? This one's a Welsh porcelain. I haven't seen these before. Is it? No, sorry, this one's Capa de Monte. That's a Capa de Monte figure. I've got Welsh ones here as well. Uh, bear with me. Is it this one? Yeah, this one. Never actually had this stuff before. 
the Welsh Porcelain Company. So, it's a good mixture here. Um, but if you take a look at the likes of this one, absolutely beautiful figurine. That one's called Port, Elegance, Age of Elegance. Or you can come down here to the likes of this. This is absolutely spectacular. Um, doesn't say turn of the century evening ball, hand decorated. Has it got a mark on it? I think this one's going to be a Capo de Monte again. I can't see the mark off the top of my head. But a really good looking porcelain figurine. You got the Wedgwood Drummer Boys. So it's a nice little group. And for £45, you know, that's really good. Included in that as well, mind, is this beautiful porcelain horse. And it is porcelain. Really, really nice. No maker's mark that I can see. Porcelain horse on plinth, wooden plinth. Yeah, it's a nice figurine again. Wedgwood Harriet. I haven't looked these up yet, so you know some of these might be good money. I would think that one there would either be like 25 30 quid or even up like 75 pounds. I don't know, but it's a nice little group. Sixteen figurines for forty-five pounds sterling, or oh, about seventy dollars. So what have I done? <laughs> Capo de Monte figurines and porcelain bisque dolls. Somebody shoot me. <laughs> so yeah, um, you saw I bought about sixteen bisque porcelain dolls for about thirty-five pound. Fifty-five dollars ish, um, and I'm I've put ten pound each on them, or about fourteen dollars each, which will give me a good return. But I haven't sold one yet. But I've only been open two days, um, so give it time. The porcelain figurines are all in the cabinets. Um, they're little shop shop items, so people can come in, take fancy to a figurine, and walk out the door with them. They're not expensive. Um, I put two on the internet on the website. One of the Colport, either Colport or Wedgwood figurines was pulling 60s and 70s on eBay. So I put that one on the website. And the Capa de Monte fortune teller or storyteller, they pull big money. Everybody is asking hundreds for them. Uh, even though I hate Capa de Monte, um, the, the subject matter, the you know reading the palm or telling the fortune, that was a, such a good subject matter. That's gone on the website as well. But the rest of them have gone in the cabinets for 20s and 30 pounds. But when you consider I only paid about $70 for 16 pieces, that was a heck of a buy. They came from Splot Market, not this weekend, the weekend before. I got a little sneaky pictures uh, of a car that was parked outside. Um, if you're a car buff, you're going to love this. Okay, so we got sort of a 1970s, I would think, Jaguar. And it is absolutely beautiful and fully restored. And I mean, it is stunning. The interior was gorgeous. Um, I, I wasn't sure about the green and white, but I tell you what, that grew on me and all. This was parked out in the street, and I tell you, everybody was stopped and looking at it. What a beautiful vintage Jag. Really nice. I had to put that in. It's really nice when... Uh, a good looking car pulls up outside and uh, we all get to have a look at it. There was another car. Um, ah, that's it. The Bugatti. Um, I, I put in one of my videos the other week that I saw down in Cardiff. That was spectacular. But this Jag was fully restored. It was beautiful looking. Really did look gorgeous. Um, now, one of my subscribers on the last video mentioned she loves butterflies. So I've taken a couple of photographs of one or two things I've got in the shop here just to show you uh, a, share, a couple of the butterflies I've already got in stock. I did say I would photograph them just so she could have a look. So 
I've got a framed set of butterflies. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Four in the set there. Um, and these are really good looking butterflies in lovely condition. Now, I couldn't tell you what's a rare butterfly from a next common one. But what I tell you is they do very well. I've also per uh, got a set of coasters. These are sort of steamed and bent bamboo with, I'm not really sure. It's like a lace with the butterfly on the lace under glass. And there's six coasters, all with different butterflies set under the glass. So really nice little things. You know, and the butterflies have a big, big following. And they are pretty. I recently had a butterfly tray, um, but that went pretty quick. Um, by butterfly tray, what I mean is a tray with all inlaid butterflies of the entire tray. They use the wings to form the pattern. That was really pretty. I'm going to show you um, another one or two buys now. This one I purchased off uh, a subscriber and a local who comes into my shop. So anyway, he comes into the shop this week and he says, I've got an old sink. Are you interested? So I thought to myself, yeah, I'll always buy old sinks. They'll go in my garden um, as planters. And this one is a Victorian salt glaze like you get on the clay pipes uh, done by Dalton and things, you know, the sewage pipes. So really, really heavy salt glaze finish. Lovely looking thing. Uh, this is about two foot by about a foot and a half, something like that. And we're going to turn this into a little herb garden in the back end. So a beautiful looking thing. Love the aged look on it. It's going to be cleaned up, obviously. It's stinking dirty, exactly how we've come in. But we are going to literally just wash it, fill it with compost. I'll block this hole up with a, a plug or something. Um, we're going to plant some mint and some other herbs in there. I would like to thank um, a subscriber. Um, Last week, a gentleman come down who follows my channel. His name's Andrew. And he asked to see a bell that I had for sale up on the website. Now, I don't mix the website and the shop or eBay. Uh, even though they're all same business, I treat them as three separate businesses. Uh, so there's no crossover with sold stock and things like that. So what goes on the website stays on the website. What goes on eBay stays on eBay. What comes in the shop stays in the shop. You get the point. Anyway, he came down to have a look at a bell, which I didn't have. But he then decided he'd be very kind and share the information with me. Let me show you the bell. So what we, what I had here was a bell that was produced uh, by the Swedish brothers, the Moray Foundry. And on the front, it is engraved, Mi Amigo. It's got the uh, foundry mark here for the Moray brothers. Now, I didn't know the history of the bell. I knew the foundry, and that was about it, and I knew it was a ship's bell. Anyway, um, Andrew came down, and he's been doing some research on this bell for me. He'd been researching it, and he found that that bell belonged to a pirate radio station uh, called Mi Amigo. It, the ship, the pirate station was based on a ship, uh, so they could go out to sea and pirate broadcast without getting into serious trouble. The ship was a German freighter uh, from the Baltic Straits. Um, Mi Amigo was the radio station that then later became Radio Caroline. And Mi Amigo sunk in 1980 off the North Sea. Now, Andrew had been doing a lot of research, and he's even found pictures of the bell on the boat. Um, with his close-ups of showing the clanger inside everything with the split clip. It's almost irrefutable at the moment that the bell belonged to that pirate uh, radio station. Therefore, I've actually removed it off my website at the moment. Well, it's still on the website, but I've made it unavailable so nobody can buy it. I haven't been well enough to do the research, but I intend to do the research this week, hopefully. 
just to confirm everything he's said uh, and put a full history. And obviously, the information he's provided has changed the item and the value drastically. Whereas it was just a spun brass ship's bell um, by the Moray brothers for £125. It is now an important piece of history off the Mi Amigo pirate radio station. Um, what can I say? It's got the foundry mark. Once I establish all the history and give it a good write-up, um, the price won't even resemble what it is now. But it turned something that was a good item into something with history, and that's what sells an item is the history behind it. And Andrew has put a lot of work in. He's been to the shop twice, bringing his research to me, and I am seriously grateful. So thank you very much for the help. I, as I said, I haven't been well, so I haven't been able to do anything with it this weekend. But I'm planning on getting the bell out hopefully this week out of storage and sitting down and doing some research. And then I will put it back up for sale with a new price and a new description. But I think it's quite exciting to have something that is from one of the early pirate radio stations where a lot of famous DJs started out. So that was really nice. Um, goes to show how much help um, I've had. I had help recently on identifying the bayonet, the 1903 bayonet. Um, I've had help now identifying the history on this bell. Uh, you know, it's just wonderful to see people actually willing to step out and actually help. He could have bought the bell for 125, relisted it probably for 500 pounds, no problem at all with all the history that he's found. So I'm so grateful. I'm going to show you a couple of pieces of stock. Um, what well, vlog would be a vlog without me showing you some stock? So I'm going to show you this. Now, does that not look Art Deco or retro, whatever you want to call it? It looks like a rocket. This piece is produced by Elkington. So it's got a seriously good name behind it. Do you know what it is? I purchased this, believe it or not, probably a month to six weeks ago, and it's been sat in the box waiting to be filmed. Myself and Steve, we went down to Cardiff, uh, down the pump and station, and this was offered to me by trade, off a dealer, for a fiver. Bear in mind, it's Elkington plate. It will clean up beautiful. This top comes off when you unscrew it. But watch the bottom. This is a little sugar sifter, so you can go around and sprinkle sugar on top of your strawberries or your cakes, that type of thing. So we have a futuristic, if you like, for the time, look-in sugar sifter produced by Elkington & Co. in lovely condition. It cost me £5 sterling, about seven, seven and a half dollars And believe it or not, they're retailing for 10 times what I've paid for it on eBay. So it'll be having a good clean-up, and that was a hell of a steal and that's been sat in a box waiting to be filmed for probably five or six weeks so now it's been filmed i'll clean it up and i will get it up for sale over the some course of this week another piece that uh, i purchased last week i had this off my regular dealer richard and we have what i presume is an african carved bust it's a very heavy dense wood um, let's be honest, it's almost an Elvis looking uh, sort of figure. Look at the pout and the hairdo. But yeah, interesting thing. It's not signed. I have had African figures that have been signed before now. It's just a very nicely carved piece. Now, I paid £15 for this, or so about $22. Uh, but I do actually rate the quality of the carving and the weight of the wood. It's just a nice carved bust and it's got good size to it you know so it's a good size bust <coughs> okay so um i'm not going to show you any more stock what i'm going to do now um I'm going to call it in just a moment. I'm going to get a few haul videos out this week. I may even try and do another live this week. Um, 
I done a live haul last week and it turned almost into a Q and A, you know, just a chat. I showed the pieces, but it ended up being online for an hour and a half, just answering some questions and just general chatting. So I may do another live this week, show a couple of pieces of stock and have a Q and A again. Uh, we'll see how I feel and how the week progresses. Uh, depends on time and whether the headache is gone or not. At the moment, I've still got a headache, but it's a manageable headache. So I'll leave it there. Hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching and supporting, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.